I said, and yet, and yet now I'm getting to know them and what their lives. I said, it's really interesting. People have really lived interesting lives. Yeah. Um, we haven't heard from Jackie. So Jackie, tell us a little bit about your life. <laughs> what did you do after uni? Oh my, well, I got married. Uh, well, I went to Santa Monica City College for three years. Well, I graduated after two years and then I took more classes and I got married uh, in February of 64. So it was just before I turned 21. And uh, I had th we had three children. We lived in West LA in an apartment and then bought a home in Oxnard in 68. I had my third one there in Oxnard. And then, um, then we moved to Everett, Washington in 1980, where my husband got a job at Boeing and he passed away in 98. All right, I'll see you guys when you get back. And um, I stayed there six more years and then I moved to Anacortes and I love it here. But where, and where, where, where are you? Anacortes, Washington. It is between oh. Seattle and the Canadian border oh. where you get the ferry to go out to the San Juan Islands. Okay. And, um, and I have three kids and five grandchildren and a great grand great great grandchild and they all live in not they my kids but all my grandkids fun. live in Spokane so, um, and what kind of work have you done I mostly substituted in the school districts for in the office at the school districts and that's basically what I've done so you had a long ha happy marriage I'm assuming what what did you... It wasn't always happy. We butted heads. We were both firstborns and butted heads a lot, but it endured. Let's say I had a long, enduring marriage. <laughs> and um, so, what were you going to ask? What well, What made it work? Why did it? Why did it endure? Commitment. Commitment. So yeah, and so. And it would have endured longer, and endured is the word. So, um, but it didn't happen that way. So he died in '98. He was um, 11 and a half years older than me, but he was 66 when he died, and I was 54. So that was pretty young. Yeah. And I have not met anyone since. I would love to get married again, but it hasn't happened. So, but I'm. You know, thing it's good here in Anacortes, and it Anacortes takes good care of their seniors. We have lots of programs for seniors, and and um, you know, things like Meals on Wheels and the little bus that'll pick you up and take you to the doctor or the library or the senior center. I bought a single level home, and we have good in home care available medical and assist just assistance for daily chores and so you know down the road i think i could maybe stay in my home longer than have to go into a care facility or something and this or is a wonderful maybe never place. need care huh or maybe never need care hope so but this is a great place to live it's a real sense of community and people know each other and care about each other. And, you know, I, I feel very good if anything happens um, that I'm not really alone, so. Well, you have your kids. Yeah. Um, well, they're not very close, bye. They're not close geographically, so I, they can't run and help me. But um, it's, a, it, it's good, life is good here. Good. Um, Kathy, I know you have to leave in a while. So somehow we're talking about what makes a marriage last and be happy over time. What what would you say? You're, You're muted, muted, Kathy. <laughs> oh. um, 
what would what made the marriage last? Um, I think to begin with, uh, we were friends. And um, it wasn't a mad love affair crush. It was a very slow friendship that evolved into, um, into a very strong bond. We, had, we realized we had a lot in common. Um, we had common goals. We had common interests. Um, and so that really was a solid beginning, I believe, that it was a friendship first. And then um, I agree with um, Sandra, um, commitment. Um, I, I don't suppose any marriage is glorious from the beginning, from the first day to, to the present. Um, there were you know, ups and downs for each of us, uh, changes in careers, um, different ideas about how we wanted to live. Uh, my husband started a jazz festival and wanted to spend time. In fact, he wanted to move to Vail, Colorado. I had an aging parent. He had an aging parent. I felt that we belonged with our family. Uh, that caused a lot of tension for a number of years, many years. Um, but we made a commitment to be together and um, and I, I have a tremendous amount of respect for him. Um, he's funny. Um, he's right now he's been sick for three months. He's had four surgeries, but he has incredible spirit and positivity and I admire him. So that I would say is what has, you know, after 57 years made our relationship last. Kathy, who were you in high school? Bamberger. I was Bamberger. Right, okay. right. Kathy Bamberger. Okay. And Danny, it is so nice to see you. You look like you're 40 years old. Well, th thank you. I'm every, I, I, I'm 79 going on 80. We all are. Yeah. We all are. <laughs> Well, it's wonderful to see you. I remember walking home with you down Santa Monica Boulevard from Emerson Junior High. <laughs> yeah, Kathy Bamberger, nice to see you too after all these years. Yes. Hey, it's Kathy. Kathy, Bill, um, if you hey, don't Bill. mind sharing, I think the experience you went through with Howard is something that uh, other people, it would be helpful if they're aware of it because either we will be or our friends will be uh, incurring hospital experiences. So do you mind kind of enlightening everybody as to what happened, how it happened and what you had to do? Okay. Um, I don't want to bore anybody because uh, it's sort of boring, but uh, no, no, on, no. Uh, starting last summer, Howard complained of a lot of back pain. And so ultimately he went for an MRI and it was determined that he had two bulging discs but that with physical therapy, he could continue to live with those for the rest of his life. And uh, on April 4th, uh, we were walking in New York from a jazz club back to our hotel where we were always big walkers. And um, he walked about four blocks from the club. And um, all of a sudden he said to me, Kathy, I can't walk. And that was the beginning. Um, we got him into a taxi. We got him back to the hotel. But two hours later, we called the paramedics because he was in agony. And uh, they took him to a, a vile hospital in New York, uh, which is where, you know, they take, well, people who've been shot and people who are delirious with alcoholism and whatever, one of those places, because it was the middle of the night. And um, they scheduled, they did all these tests and ultimately scheduled him for surgery. And then when they opened him, when they um, did all the MRIs and blood work, they said, whoops, your platelet count is way too low. We can't operate. And Howard just determined that with the pain that he had, he was getting out of there. And we managed to uh, get back to Los Angeles, but it was Easter week by the time we got back. 
and we couldn't find a surgeon to operate on him. So it was uh, another, it was two weeks after our, after his, uh, his, um, uh, whatever it's called. Uh, uh, anyway, he had a discectomy here at Cedar sinai and he was doing fine for two or three or four days. And then he started to feel terrible pain in his legs and terrible pains in his back. And he basically took to his bed. The surgeon didn't believe him. He kept saying, you're gonna feel better, it takes time. And four weeks later, they did an MRI and a CAT scan and found that he had a horrible infection. Oh. So they took him back into surgery and they tried to, to put a, a disc in through the stomach, but when they opened up the stomach, they saw that the infection was so bad that uh, they couldn't do anything without compromising whatever equipment they were gonna put in. So they sewed him up and three days later, they opened him back up through the first surgery to flush out whatever they could because there were abscesses and all these things that had been caused gosh and um he got home and between the infection and the fact that um his surgery hadn't worked in the first place he was bedridden for another month he oh, could not gosh. sit stand he couldn't walk he was in a wheelchair um i couldn't even get him on a walker to go anywhere we had to have medical transport come with a gurney for every appointment that he went on. I mean, it was just, you can't even imagine. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, it'll be three weeks tomorrow. He had a three level um, fusion and with nuts and bolts and all kinds of cages and stuff. And he is beginning to walk again. And, but the infections are absolutely not in control yet. So he's on his second six week course of antibiotics. He's on two separate antibiotics, which has to be in, um, IV'd infused five times every, four, every 24 hours. And we are just in, in the process, he's had another issue come up because he, he's a cancer survivor and has had a recurrence. So he, he's a mess, he's been a mess. And we were, um, I think it was May 11th, Bill, we were all supposed to be together. Um, and, um, and it's just been downhill from there. So, um, you know, you just, uh, you just don't know. You just don't know with, with, uh, with our age, when something is just gonna break. And then when you go to the hospital, you're in danger of infections. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we stand, but we're very hopeful now that uh, within the next month that he will be able to, uh, that we'll be able to go back to Vail where he runs the jazz festival, which is going on without him because we planned early this year. So that's the story. Does he participate in the jazz festival? I'm sorry. Does he participate in the festival or just are you just in the audience? He's the founder and he and I um, 28 years ago started uh, um, pretty extensive programs. We have educational programs in the schools in Colorado. We have um, we have a a, mass, a, um, a workshop for the top uh, student high school students in jazz. Um, there are usually about 150 nominations every year. We take 12 with six instructors. Um, we have four concerts a week from the end of June until Labor Day. And we have an incredible staff that's really, really stepped up to the plate because it's a big deal in Colorado. Congratulations. That's yeah, congratulations. And Thank you for sharing that. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, Kathy, and I, I hope he recovers soon. Oh, well, he will. He will. He's, uh, he's a very high-spirited, high-energy, 
strong person and he will he has no doubt he will so he will yeah it was i it was a good question um <laughs> bill you're right i mean well i have lots of friends here now parkinson stroke you know all kinds of and yeah it 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 does make me feel like I'm a walking time bomb and, you know, no, really, you know, when is it my turn? Well, can I just say um, that I really believe that we live life 15 minutes at a time yes. and that we cannot be worried about what will happen in 16 minutes because then it stops us from enjoying the passage of time that we have where we're feeling good. And so I think that we we just need to curtail any of those kinds of thoughts because you can't change what's what's really in the stars or in your destiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But right now you can live and appreciate the moment. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, good. Don Juan's uh, Car Carlos Casanata's character says to always live like death is on your left shoulder. And I think that's a good way to live too, because it makes you it makes you appreciate the present, as you said, Kathy. Yeah. And um and really um we we find ways of of um making the best. I mean when he was in in horrible, horrible pain, you know, you, there's nothing you can do. But um, we find things to laugh about. Uh, he found he's not a TV watcher, but he uh, his grandson told him about Breaking Bad and he watched it and he got into it. So he discovered things that he could do during a time when he ordinarily would never, ever sit in front of the TV, but he could. Do you have kids nearby, Kathy? Uh, yes. We have one child and we have two grandchildren. Uh, our son is married and um, our daughter-in-law is a, a film and television director. And unfortunately for the last two and a half months, she was on location. So my son was in charge of his two children who both go to different schools and have different camps. And so I couldn't help him and he couldn't help us, but it's, it's good to have a family. Joel joined us. Hi, Joel. Hi. Hi, Joel. Hi. Hi, Joel. What I'm in Los Angeles right now, actually. Why? Uh, well, I came out to visit my family, but I also worked in a little research and uh, uh, to help pay for the trip, actually. Uh, but uh, in any case, I, I, I'm starting to enjoy it. I had a, a very stressful first few days here, uh, but it's getting better. Um, and uh, we just spent the day out in Venice Beach, which was quite nice. If you can find a parking place, right? right. Uh, somehow we got on the topic of what makes a marriage last over time. You've been married for a long time. What What are your secrets? Yeah, we've been married nine years, but we were, we've been together for 22 years. So uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, we, uh, we just, uh, we take it, uh, I wouldn't say 20 minutes at a time, uh, as Kathy said, suggested, but uh, you know, we take it a day at a time and uh, uh, you know, some days are better than others, and uh, I don't know, we've just uh, worked out a way of, I hope, communicating well, and we had a really good conversation last night about our financial needs and a bunch of other stuff, and I don't know, somehow I was uh, really appreciated, appreciative of, of her uh, that she was uh, uh, speaking so rationally and, and thinking carefully <laughs> about stuff. Uh, there are a few things I think more carefully about uh, having to do with investment and things of that nature but uh in any case uh it was a good it was a good conversation and uh and we share we have a lot of shared interests uh books movies tv programs and things of that sort so uh she, she would be here but uh she went off to uh, uh something from a convenience store yeah. anyway but i really love her dearly and and feel incredibly privileged and fortunate to have her in my life is it is it okay to ask Joe how you and Carol met and if it was love at first sight? <laughs> That's a good well, question. Uh, well, at first, well, actually, we met 
briefly um, at dinner with some mutual friends. I don't know if any of you remember uh, Martha Robeson, who is, is also yes. Martha Bardak. Uh, but uh, Martha Robeson, uh, uh, or Bardak, was a good friend of Carol. And um, uh, I met her and a, a bunch of other people we know for dinner uh, one time in, in North Cambridge and, and uh, had a nice conversation with her. And uh, I don't know, we, we didn't really follow up uh, on, um, on each other. Actually, the, the mutual friend that was hosting the, that event uh, uh, was um, trying to fix me up with someone else, but it, that, that didn't work out so well. But uh, in any case, uh, <laughs> Carol was working at UCLA and taking a uh, extension course on the Bible, and uh, I have done biblical scholarship and so forth. And she wrote me to ask me if she could share a paper she wrote about Psalm 139, uh, which is a, an amazing psalm. There's all this uh, 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 appreciation expressed about God having made us fearfully and wonderfully, uh, and uh, and so forth. She wrote an absolutely exquisite paper about it, and I wrote her back with a. Uh, you know, a very enthusiastic comment. And I don't know, it started a conversation which uh, in many ways is still going on. But uh, uh, in any case, that's how we, it led to us corresponding about our lives on email. And, uh, and uh, so it was basically a relationship formed through email, uh, which I think is uh, very important. Uh, it's, uh, I think in many ways has a lot of advantages over uh, in-person uh, contact. And uh, I, I don't know, and that, that really helped a great deal. And by early 2000, we were uh, seeing each other and uh, she came to visit in Boston. I came out here to LA where she was living. Uh, and uh, she's originally from the Boston area, from, the, from uh, Massachusetts. Um, but in any case, uh, uh, we have merged our lives in co complicated ways. And uh, uh, I, I don't know, I, I, I really appreciate her. Were you married previously? I had been married uh, uh, for two and a half years uh, in my college years. Uh, my, I met, a, I, I met a, a woman named Louise Blaustein uh, in uh, 19, it was my, uh, I guess, junior year of college. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, uh, fresh, uh, actually sophomore, junior. I was kind of on, on the cusp there. And uh, we met and hit it off for a while, but it, it was a very troubled relationship. And uh, we made it through two and a half years, but... Uh, uh, we broke up when uh, we moved out of, we were living in Oakland, California. Uh, I had a connection to Berkeley and I was actually working at UC Berkeley uh, for part of that time. And, uh, but anyway, I decided I wanted to go to rabbinical school and um, that created new complications in our relationship. And uh, I, I may have described this before in one of our uh, group conversations, but anyhow, it, it didn't last. And I'm glad it didn't last because uh, we were not compatible. Um, Bill, you've been married twice. What did you learn from your first that made your second so durable? Uh, from the first that we got married too quickly and probably not for the right reasons. Um, and our interests were uh, uh, very different as we began to found, find out. Uh, after we were married, I went to Vietnam for a year, came back and we made it another year, but she had a different design on life than mine. So we decided to go our separate way. So I think uh, I really took my time before I got involved seriously with, with my present wife. And uh, that gave us plenty of time to, I think, to understand each other and stress the relationship and see how people respond. Yeah. And wh when have been the hard times and how did you get through them? Um, the hard times were uh, probably more recently where she's had two cancer operations, but she's a very, very uh, optimistic, strong-willed person. Uh, she did great, but obviously, uh, you know, it's, it's cause for concern, and I totally dedicated my time to taking care of whatever she needed to be done. And I think that's the, the, the role of a spouse is to serve and serve as best as you can and do the best job you possibly can and not be too concerned about yourself. Hmm. And recently you've had kind of a religious insight. Do you want to say a word about that? Uh, yeah, I 
did not come up in a religious family. Uh, I remember attending Bel Air Presbyterian um, for a while. My parents were not religious, but they said, if you want that exposure, you go take it. Uh, uh, I was a little discouraged what I found at the Bel Air Presbyterian that all the teenagers were out back smoking and having a great time. And I didn't think that was very Christian-like and I wasn't a Christian at the time. So I kind of put that on the back burner, but my uh, present wife is a very devout Christian and, and uh, she had brought me to Christ about 20 years ago. And I've enjoyed that uh, relationship that we've we've had together in that study and the relationship that I've had with Jesus Christ. Well, praise God, Bill. Well, I'm happy you. to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Um, Sandy, why don't you say something? I know you've been happily married for a long time. What, what right. makes it work? Well, we'll be celebrating our 57th year in August. Wow. Oh, wow. I heard Vietnam, and I remember when we got married, my husband, I met, may have mentioned this, um, picked me up from my job on July 27th, 1965, and he said, we've got to get married today. I got a man downtown, and he drove me downtown, and the reason was, is President Johnson was going to not draft married men. Oh, if you were married by August 1st. We had a big wedding plan for August 8th. So we went and we got married. And it was very interesting because no one knew we got married. It was our secret. We didn't act married, if you know what I mean in the personal sense. We just went on and we had our big wedding. Mm -hmm. And we thought we had missed the draft, but Uncle Sam was smarter and started tiptoeing behind Dick. And he realized either he was going to have to enlist or he would sign up for a four year stint either in the Air Force or the Navy. Uh, he was a college graduate, but there were no um, officer schools offered to him because there weren't enough. And I don't know if all of the men in our class were at the draft board on Westwood Boulevard but that's where he was. And um, he tried one of his friends, uh, influential man, tried to get him out, but he enlisted. And I think those four years were really key in beginning to cement us. He had two tours in Vietnam. I was alone. Um, we talked once a month when the ship came in and I'm gonna say, if I use the word grateful, when it was all over, we had one child in the Navy. We were so grateful to have, if I call it, survived the war because of all the young men and women who died. It was, it was not a well-accepted war. And I think we were just so grateful. And we started our lives, Dixon Architect, he got a job, we came back here. I was a teacher, so I got a job. Actually, I didn't. I had babies. But I think I heard the word commitment. You have to make a commitment because not every day is rosy. Um, you have children, and not every day is an easy day as your children are growing up. Um, we were friends. Uh, we liked each other. We liked being together. Um, he had his activities, I had mine, but we spent time to, with each other. And our family, our children, became the center cog of all of our life. Whether it was submitting to him being the uh, AYS so a soccer coach or the regional director or whatever, uh, I was very active with my girls and Job's daughters, a Masonic organization. Um, I was very, very active at the school they went to, which I became a teacher at. Um, everything was dedicated to our lives as a family. Um, we ate together every night. These may sound, I was thinking about it because when I was writing about it, we lived a very simple life. 
We were careful financially because we only had so much money and we had a house payment. Um, we spent a lot of time with each other. When the kids grew up, my uh, eldest daughter got married and she got married when she was 27 or 28, because I think at 26 or 27, she had her first child. And it was out of wedlock. And at that time in 1998, we were very embarrassed about this. We didn't think that that was going to be part of our lives. And it was the biggest blessing that came to our lives is our Isabel. And then she had another child and they got married. And then she had the third child and they got divorced. <laughs> and we cared for these children their whole lives from the time they were four months old to the day they graduated high school. My husband was the carpool person to take to the dentist person. He did all of the things that parents are supposed to do, but they both work. And it caused us to be closer because we did so many activities. We traveled with the family. We ate every dinner together. Um, we laughed together. When we turned 54, Dick and I, we decided, my son told me there's a group in Santa Monica called the LA Lakers and they train for marathons. And I thought, well, and he said, and mom, they can, you can walk a marathon, you don't have to run it. From the age of 54 to 75, we did 32 marathons. <laughs> wow. And we did probably at least 50 half marathons. And we were darn good at it. It's a long distance, 26.2 miles. It is, yeah. You realize what it means to go out every Saturday morning with your husband, a group of people, he was the leader of what we call the ladies group. It was a marvelous, and we just had so much fun together. And we we had bad times. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to be a, a naysayer. One of my daughters was kidnapped and raped at the age of eleven. Right. And when that happened, it was it was terrible. Terrible for my child. Terrible for Dick and I, terrible for our family, and terrible forever. And I think that we had to decide how we were going to handle this. Were we going to start blaming each other? We should have taken her to her friend's house. She shouldn't have walked here. We decided. It wasn't our fault. It was the ugly man's fault who ripped her off the street. It wasn't, we didn't do it. And so we really became very dedicated to each other. And maybe that's why we were so dedicated to our children who are growing up and our grandchildren. And we still have a nice time. My husband right now suffers from Parkinson's a dirty, dirty trick for a man who is so healthy and vibrant. Um, he's had survived colon cancer, but his prostate cancer has reared its ugly head. And so he's with an oncologist. So this really shows, I'm thinking of you, Kathy, this really shows what, I, if love is or dedication, um, because he's a brave man, a fighter, and we work well together. And maybe that's made us stronger also. We've always liked each other. We've always liked each other's family. We never had to go on Sunday night to his parents and on Saturday night to my mother's. We always had everybody together. It was just part of our, our our lives. And maybe that's what made us stronger. I'm sort of rambling. No, you're not rambling. You're making a lot of sense. And you're you're saying that you made lemonade out of lemons, that you used adversity to be stronger, not to be weaker. Right. And, and we we made that decision and um 
You know, at, when I look back at that time when she was 11, they had just opened up the Santa Monica Rape Treatment Center near Santa Monica Hospital in St. John's. But at that time, they didn't have programs for children who had been raped. They had programs for incest, um, different other things. And that was really probably the most difficult for Dick and I to have to navigate how to take care of her. Um, I will say she had a wonderful pediatrician at Kaiser Permanente who, if she were sick at home and he knew I had to work when she was 13, 14, he would call her every day during his lunch break to sit and talk to her to see oh. if she needed anything. And I, I remember the kindness for a man that didn't need to do that, you know? And so we have a lot to be grateful for, a lot. That's what I'll say. And we still Andrew, have a lot. What, what, what's your daughter, how is your daughter now? What, uh, what is? My daughter suffers from terrible anxiety terrible depression. She suffers from making very bad choices with men. It's a, it's a very sad thing. She's 51 years old. Oh. And we're still her biggest cheerleaders. Is she, she's the one who had the three children? No, she's, she's the one who never got married. And, um, she, she lives alone, she works, but she has these up and down swings. She said something really interesting to me because she's not in a good spot right now. She said something so interesting to me the other day. She said, you know, mom, I just worry, what am I going to do without you and dad? You are the only two people that have always, always been there for me. That's kind of sad, isn't it? Or yeah. Sad. Sandra, may I tell you quickly about my a program that my friend developed for Parkinson's yes. people? She lives yes. in the uh, California desert, in Palm Desert, and it's called. You can look it up online. It's called Song Shine. Song Shine, all one word. Song Shine for parkinsons.org and spell out for song shine for parkinsons and it's a program through music that develops that brings par parkinsons people out it it helps them to talk better and to to not to be so uh, closed in and she has done wonders with that. They produce plays and all kinds of things. And these people are singing and it's, it's wonderful. So look it up and see what she does. Well, my husband participates in something called the Parkinson's Voice Project. And right now he's practicing singing and you record it and they have an online virtual concert with maybe 350 people. I'm going to write that down because these are the things that are so, the Parkinson's uh, virtual boxing, all those things. He's very, he was so active before, so maybe that's good for him too, all, all these, to speak with intent, to do everything with intent. Thank you. I'm going to write, I'm going to get a paper. So tell me the name of it again, please. It's Song Shine. Will you wait just a minute? I want, I want to write yes. it down. Um, Jackie, put it in the chat. Okay. Oh, okay. That's a good idea to everybody. Let me see. Okay. Yes. That's perfect. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you so much. To, yeah. uh, let me see here. To uh, everybody, I got to figure out how to do this now. Just a minute. I'm not real computer savvy. I've just got Danny, Gail on. Next. Yeah, wait a minute. Uh -oh. Oh. I'll maybe get it somebody, from my computer. Somebody else can do it while I dictate it, maybe. 
Sure. If that's right. okay. Um, uh, or here, I can, I'll just type it back to, to Gail, because I don't know how to get some anybody else on here now, because Gail chatted me. Time. I'll just write it to Gail here. That's perfect. So, Thank you. Song Shine, S-H-I-N-E, or Song Shine for Parkinson's dot org. And Thank her name you. is Sunshine for Parkinson's dot org. And it um I've known this gal for a long time. She has a a master's degree in a doctorate in music and she is amazing and she works with these people to strengthen their voices and it's an amazing program and yeah she's done a lot with it she lives in the desert part of the time and here part of the time thanks um Thank did you, you get that did you yeah. get that Gail? yeah I, thanks. okay um danny what what about what did you learn from being married to maxine and having kids what <clears throat> what did i learn yeah what what made it work or not when when it didn't work why didn't it work oh god um i yeah i here i can't answer it uh i i well here i'll just uh, yeah i'll it's here it was uh kind of in a way love at first sight i was a student at cal and young it was like 63, 1963, 64. You're like 20, 19. Yeah. And um, gee, I'm going to get emotional. Um, Good. So anyway, <clears throat> I met these, like, you know, of course, I was born and grew up in L.A. So... Um, I, I I was used to, I don't know how to say it, Jewish women, girls in LA and not New York. And then I met all these young, pretty girls sitting next to me in a class and they were all from New York and they had names that I just associated with my grandparents' generation, like really, you know, what I considered elderly names like Maxine, Myrna, Golda, Bluma, uh, I, Sylvia, I don't know, just, and so, and I, and they were real characters too, you know, real New York, funny characters. Then they said, oh, we have a friend named Maxine. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, so, so I, I went over to their apartment and she was cooking dinner and said, you know, could I have dinner? So, so she was very motherly and nurturing. Anyway, so it was like we became boyfriend and girlfriend right away. Yeah, I don't know why I'm so emotional. She died five years ago, but I think it just, you know, <clears throat> see how fast our lives went by. Um, so I need to compose myself and then I'll come back. Okay. Tell, tell us like a, a really happy memory you had with Maxine. When, when was like a time when you felt like, oh, this is, this is the ultimate. Uh, of happiness? Like Gee, that's a good question. Babies uh, are born. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When? It, no, really. Yeah. When each of our sons were born, and I was a very, very hands-on father. <clears throat> I, you know, I taught, so I, I was very lucky. I got a sabbatical a whole year, you know, for each of them. <sighs> Anyway, uh, yeah, I let me go back to, I want to just say, I thank Bill 
Bill Crouch a lot <clears throat> for his, his time and he helped my two nephews. My sister has twin boys in LA <clears throat> and the, he gave them advice about their careers in finance. So thank you, Bill. Well, you're I, welcome. You know, my, sis, my sister and I, and, and they appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I got so, I'm, I'm so emotional. I think but it's wonderful. It means you care. Okay. You had, you had an, a relationship. Yeah, well, this is all Bill's fault because he had to bring up. <laughs> once again. Yes, once again, <laughs> aging, aging and <laughs> illness. And yeah, I mean, I try, I, I guess I've been in denial, really. I swear to God because I taught. And so I was constantly with younger people. Yeah. And, and I, my mom's 102 and a half and she does oh. not dye her hair and she's <laughs> only partially gray. And Dave Kuhn's always like, everyone accuses me, I don't dye my hair. And so uh, I think I have just kind of been in denial of how old I really am. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Now it's hitting me. <laughs> you know, friends here are dying and getting sick. And anyway, so it's like I was in denial for a long time. And now I realize, you know, 79. Uh, and, you know, Jackie, you said you'd like to be married again. Well, <clears throat> well, this is depressing. I'm on... <laughs> Match.com at 79, internet dating. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's kind of a bizarre experience. Um, but it's something you could try, Jackie, even though I'm not recommending it, because it, <laughs> it's just weird. Uh, well, anyway, but, but to try to, I'm trying to think of uh, an answer like happiness, happiness. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure if I, I, no, you know what? I, I can remember feeling happy when I was real young, playing with Kent and Joel and, uh, and being in high school and with Dave Kuhn and Jim Taylor doing things. But, but it's, this is horrible. I'll, I'll, I'll probably remember and then have to call you, Gail. Because <laughs> uh, Maxine and I fought a lot, I guess. That's other people you know, referred to a stormy relationship or contentious. Um, yeah, but. Some couples, they like that. It's exciting. Yeah, no, I know. And exciting. we got, yes, I know. And that's, that was sort of, yeah, that I was mean, a bad. It creates passion, but was, was it productive for you or like, like a game or was it negative? It was pretty negative. I mean, we, it, it, yeah, it was pretty negative. I'm trying to think of a happy, besides the children being born. Um, I, I'm going to have to call you back, Gail. Why, um, why did, how long were you married? Oh, like, 40 about, years. Uh, uh, how, what? I thought years. someone said, no, like about, 15 years. Oh. Uh, see, we separated at, at, at one point and then eventually we did get divorced um, in 1987. But she never remarried. I never remarried. Oh. Every relationship I ever was in said exactly the same thing verbatim. Dan, technically you're divorced. In reality, you're still, you know, cause, cause I, you, you know, I'd go to birthdays, Thanksgivings, you know, I was always here. Um, you know, we had a very close, we were closer after we were divorced, which, and so we still had, yeah, I mean, anyway, so, well, 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm running out of things to say. Well, let me just say that <laughs> last, last meeting, Sandy, Sandy, I was going to say you have another career as an actress because you, <laughs> you said about a, a so-called mixed marriage, you said about your husband, <laughs> your husband's family, you said, oh God, oh, Ivea, Shiksa. <laughs> you imitated them and that was very funny. Do you remember? You, yes. you, were, you were a good actress. Anyway, um, yeah, Gail, I don't know what else to say. This is stumping me why I can't think of one example. Well, okay. what, have you, what did you learn? I mean, let's say you meet somebody's splendid. Well, well, oh, 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 oh but here, here's the thing. Just like Bill said, and, and, and Sandy, and about commitment. Um, when I got married, I swear to God, I thought that was for life, that I would never get divorced, never, never. And I thought it was, you know, for life. Yeah. Anyway, um, this is very, very embarrassing, and I don't want you to put this on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to watch it. It's okay. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah, I, 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 well, here's the other thing. I think I'm feeling very sad because a very close friend of mine, he just, just a month ago, I guess, or even less, he passed away. And, and we were very close, especially during COVID. We'd talk on the phone almost every day. And yeah, I mean, anyway, so like I said, a lot of people around me now are, well, wait, forget about me. Bill, you can't, you're in touch with Dave Kuhn a lot. How, how is his health with Parkinson's? Seems to be fine, he's out golfing. Uh, oh, good. So he's he's doing well so far, but oh, you know, good, uh, good. Alan Adeshek just passed away a couple of weeks ago. I know, I yeah, know. We had Parkinson's for I don't know 10, 15 years. Who who was yeah. that? Alan Adeshek. Okay. Yeah, Alan Adeshek. Is that Peggy Lusk? Hello. Oh, there's Peg. Yeah. Hi, Peach. Sorry, I thought it was next week. Yeah, oh, me too. Well, I'm glad you're here. No, but Gail, I, 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 didn't you have the 19th also? I, I thought I thought I wrote down the 19th. Um, anyway, yeah, I thought I it was next week too. Okay. I need to depart also. I'm going to say goodbye. Good to see oh, you, Jackie. Bye, Jackie. Thank you. I have to say goodbye too. I have a five o'clock meeting. Oh, right. Kathy. Bye, bye Kathy. Kathy. Lots of luck to Howard. Thank you yeah. so Lots much. Lots of luck to Howard. Thank um, you. Peg, we're, we're talking about uh, what makes a marriage last over time. So you get to say, what it, it, and in a, in a productive way. Because how long have you been married now? Um, wow, 50, almost 57 years. Ah. Impossible. Yeah, I think it's true. <laughs> How do you keep from being bored? Um, busy all the time. Keep busy doing a lot of things every day. Um, me, myself, or as a couple? Couple. Oh, yeah. Um, we do. We don't do a whole lot together. I mean, usually at night, I go out or have dinner together and stuff. And um, we play golf occasionally every Sunday now, um, nine holes. Um, used to go to movies before COVID, but don't seem to do that right now. Um, Maybe we should get some, 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 of, the, some of the, those people like Hi, us. Joni. <laughs> Hi, Joni. Hi. That, uh, you know, that we should all get those that get, gets back into the ones, to the ones that came, come to the ones that once, what? Yeah. Once the, yeah. Yeah. So, yes. oh, <laughs> I'm not a big talker, so I love to listen. Um, what, what 
have you told your three sons what did you give them advice when they got married say be sure you do da 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 and don't do da 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 to make your marriage as happy as your parents oh boy well two of one is still not married so um i don't i don't know it was so long ago i mean gosh one of them's been married almost almost 30 years wow it seems crazy um <laughs> <laughs> but what they should do or should not do uh, uh, have a family is what they should do would be my first suggestion um, as soon as uh, have some time together but then you know work for me then have a family so that's kind of how we did it um, I don't know without my family there they kind of we do an awful lot together so I'd probably rather be with them than anybody else. Especially my grandkids are really fun right now, as, as we all know. Um, How many times did you go to Singapore to visit them when they lived there? Oh, just, I went twice when they lived there. I don't like flying, so that mm -hmm. was a big, a big uh, event, but I got there somehow and didn't crash. So. <laughs> <laughs> I hate flying. But that's the best airport in the world, Singapore. Yeah, it's beautiful. Did you see the butterfly garden in the airport? Yeah, sorry, everything. It's really beautiful. Did you actually go to Singapore? Yeah. Did you spend time there? Yeah, on my way to Bali or to China a couple times. Yeah, it's really, it's beautiful. Very hot. That was I, I left with the impression it was very wonderful culture there, but... Uh, I couldn't live there. It's just too hot. It's, it's muggy. Hot. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, humid. You just couldn't get away from it, really. Yeah. Um, Joni, do you want to say anything to the group? Me? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing for fun? Um, well, I haven't really done much for one for fun for that, for that whole thing, you know. I mean, I've definitely gone over all the ones that have, have, have had had been had so you know well, you I'm, look you look good <laughs> no no really you do you look great oh you do you do really and your hair is very nice really. oh thank you <laughs> um it's got a little curl to it now is yeah, that because they, 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 they're different? I, well, my, but my, well, you know, down to the town, going to the, from the, from the top to the bottom, it's just really not, um, we could have a Joan? different, different dis, dis cues. Can I talk to Joan? This is Sandy Chesel. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Joan. Can yes. I come and visit you? Are you still in West Los Angeles? Yes. Can I come and visit you and we could talk? Sure. Okay. I'll call your daughter and I'll find out when I come, could come and visit, okay? I'd like to see you. I'd like to thank you for all the nice things you've done for our class. For sure. Yeah. Okay? You've, you've really been... You've really been special, and now Gail's taking her over. It's not not many people can say that about their class, and you were very much responsible. Okay. Yeah, Joni did all the work. I'm not she sure. found everybody, anybody that was to be found. She found them. <laughs> yeah, we're 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 indebted to you, Joan. We're in, okay. indebted to you. Hey, Joan. Hi, Hi architect. Joan. Husband Dick. Hi, Dick. Hi, how are you? Good, we're thank fine. you. We're, we're, okay. we're finding just... out all your secrets. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're fine. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I just was going to tell Peggy that um, for I hate flying too, but for therapy, Bill will take you up in his airplane and then <laughs> you'll be cured. Is it a, is it a, like a jet? 
<laughs> I, I don't know. I just, but I know he's a pilot and he has and he flies. I know that. I know. I I don't know. These little planes scare me. What kind of plane, Bill? Uh, it's a Cessna 182, which is single engine, four seats. Goes about 150 miles an hour. And yeah, I that's started... the kind that makes you nauseous. Makes me nauseous. <laughs> Does your wife fly in it with you? Uh, she heights are an issue with her, but if we're going <laughs> to see grandchildren, she will definitely come along. But I started that <clears throat> in uh, our senior year at uni. Um, I don't know if you remember Bob Swain, but he was a half a year ahead of us, and we. We both worked at um, the 76 Union Station in Westwood Village at night. And then we'd save up our money and go down and take flying lessons. Oh. At the uh, Santa Monica Airport. Oh. And uh, then I, it was time to solo and the, uh, I was under the age of 18. So the instructor said, well, your parents have to sign off on that. And I said, well, they don't know anything about this. Oh. And, and I don't think they were, would approve of it. She said, I, <laughs> she, she said, well, I can't get around it. You need their signature. It took me a couple of weeks to convince them that it was OK. But anyway, we got it done. So You've yeah, been, been flying a long through. time. You've yeah. been flying a long, yes. long, long time. Yeah. yeah. So Where did you go to college, Bill? UCLA. <clears throat> so close to home. And Danny went to Berkeley. I went to Berkeley. Peggy went to San Jose State. Peggy, why did you pick San Jose State and not Sonoma or San Francisco State or someplace else? Um, only because my aunt and uncle lived in Vallejo. And it was a good teacher's college. That was probably the reason. Um, easy to get to, train right away. So that's probably why. There's a good ratio of men to women. That's a big reason. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true you said that um, you would have gone to UC, but I made you take econ to make you meet boys? Yeah, I could have, pro if I didn't have that D, I probably could have gone there. <laughs> Did we meet boys in econ? Huh? Did we meet boys in econ? Yeah. Well, I don't know if we talked to them, but it was a great <laughs> class to take. A, I think, got an A, and I think I got a D. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, and, and Peggy, Peggy, did you become a teacher then? Yeah, that's what oh. I wanted to do. Yeah, I, I always knew I wanted to be a teacher, so. Gee, this is Sandy, Peggy, Joel, me, Gail, uh, uh, all teachers. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get any. I didn't get any. Any of them. Joni, what did you do for work? Uh, I don't remember now. Well, it was that accounting thing, right? Oh, the accounting, because I was, I was doing accounting. Yeah. Uh, jo Joni went back and got her CPA probably what, 20, 25 years ago? Yeah. Um, yes. Oh. Good she for ran you. That, she ran that company. <laughs> Abrams and Rubeloff or something like that, whatever it was. Oh, that's it. Abram and Rubeloff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Peggy, how's your puppy doing? Puppy? Oh, he's. Dog. He's very good. He's in the other room. He's exhausting, but <laughs> do you want to show us how he's grown? You, you want to see him? I'll show you mine if you show us yours. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh. This is Bella. Bella. Joel, where's your big dog? Uh, back home. Uh, well, he's uh, oh, being duh. he's being babysat right now, but uh, he's doing. I, I also wanted to mention as a factor in in a good factor in marriage is is bonding over one's dog over over your dog. Uh, Omar is the structure of our life, uh, essentially. This is my new life. This is what I do all day long. Oh, oh yes, <laughs> very cute. That's Mick. 
He's um, five months old. Oh, a baby. So, yeah. From being a fairly social being, I now just walk my dogs, go to the dog park, <laughs> try and train them. <laughs> that's, all, that's what I do. Crazy. That's crazy. Oh, that's funny. Oh, my goodness. Where's your dog, Gay? Do you see oh, him? Yeah. He's a mini Aussie, right? Right. Yeah, he's great. She, this is Bella. She's uh, going to be a year next month. They're fun. Yeah, I didn't know it's going to be this much work. <laughs> They're a big um, responsibility. Yeah. Oh, you want, she still wants to be up. Do you see Peggy's dog? Look, there's a dog. She looks a little like a border collie. She's she's a Aussie Shepherd mini. Uh-huh. But do they have that kind of same kind of face, huh? Yeah. yeah. But, but, but you know what Joel said, I, I agree with a completely about a couple and then you bond uh, over the little you know, new baby in the family, a little puppy or kitten, that a dog really becomes a family member and oh yeah, such a strong, strong bond between people and animals. And, oh, well, here, <clears throat> every, every, oh yeah, today, my sister's now at UCLA hospital with her two dogs, she's part of a pet program and they, come and she has a Polaroid camera and she goes and the dogs are trained to go up on the patient's bed and then they oh, pet the dogs wonderful. and she takes a picture and she even goes to some locked psychiatric wards and and the nurses and doctors are always astounded how a, a woman who never talked to anyone will suddenly go crazy over her dog and then start to talk and yeah. Oh, and blood pressure um, goes down and arthritis, yeah. you know, gets improved. It, it's, it's really amazing. Yeah. They're therapy dogs. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. that's fabulous. I read about a therapy horse that was the same kind of. Huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it can be a therapy turtle. I mean, it <laughs> Well, fur is nice because it it's soothing. Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> um, Joel, do you, would you just say a word since you're still teaching about? I, I've asked you this before, but about students today, I'm just because you're enthusiastic. But I hear other people say that you know they don't want to work, and I have not, not have, curious. Well, with a few notable exceptions, I. I um, I have found them incredibly energetic and committed and enthusiastic to learn. And I, I, I don't know, just a, uh, part of it is that I've gotten to be a better teacher over time, but, but uh, I don't know, somehow uh, they're, they welcome an opportunity to get into their inner life. And, and, uh, and we do that through reading literature for, or through watching a film or there are ways in which uh, it becomes uh, you know, a, a goods to think with I, is the term I, I, I like to use. Uh, and, and uh, you know, we get a lot of good thinking done and a lot of good philosophical conversation. Uh, I, I, somehow the idea of doing philosophy through um, uh, popular culture or, or, um, or, uh, or for that matter, religious culture, uh, you know, it, it, it is a very important uh, part of my experience in, in both learning and teaching. Yeah. My my niece is 33, <clears throat> excuse me, and doing the dating app thing like Danny. And uh -huh. she she finds that most of the men that she meets can't even carry on a conversation. They don't know to say, oh, and what about you? What are your interests? You know, they, they don't know how to converse. I wonder what's going on. Yeah, that's sad. I don't know. I mean, that's, uh, 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 I don't know, somehow um, having... Um, you know, culture moving through us in some way, in a different way, is 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 you know one of the great joys of life, and and uh, and it is an opportunity to to learn what's unfamiliar about another person, and uh, I don't know somehow that idea of experiencing the other uh, through uh, you know through 
uh, contact with, uh, uh, to some degree with the past, but also with the present. And um, I, I don't know, it's a way of turning people toward the world as well, I think. And that, that's an important dimension of it. Is that true for you, Dan, for example? Well, well, yes, although, see, I retired now. I, I'm I not, I, I retired about eight or nine years ago. I was, I was teaching um, part-time in the sociology department at Cal. Uh -huh. But, and then when I retired, I started immediately volunteering in assisted living communities, yeah. old folks homes uh, and leading discussions on current events. So uh -huh. I pretended that I wasn't retired, that I was just leading seminars, which I did in graduate school. And yeah, so I kept, I'm, I'm doing that. But you know, Joel, uh, uh, from what I read and this, I, I couldn't teach anymore because I just think I'd say or do something that would get me fired. For instance, <laughs> no, 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 I don't mean, <laughs> I mean politically here, I, you know, I, I'm very friendly, overly friendly sometimes to strangers and then touch people. Like, you know, I taught in Israel for two years at Tel Aviv University. And in the Middle East, everyone touches each other, whether you want them to or not, you know. <laughs> And, 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 and so with female students, you know, I just, you know, it wouldn't be sexual harassment, but you're not, you can't, in other words, I've just read so many articles about people, faculty, you know, or using the wrong language. I mean, that's, first of all, here, I'll just get this out of my system real quickly, okay, since I'm venting. Here, I was at a meeting on Zoom the other night, uh, a men's meeting, all men. And, and then I'm introducing, there was one, and then say I'm introducing Bill. So, so this speaker said, and now they will, yeah, I feel, yeah, Sandy. It's nuts. Yeah. Bill is a single individual, unless I'm seeing double or something. I, I, it's not plural. I don't see they. A anyway, all of these things I read about, I just think I wouldn't last one day. You know, now, now I would say, I mean, anyway. So, so, but this is wonderful. I do, I like tomorrow morning, and and I'll lead at a, at the. A discussion on current events and about 12 regulars and I've been doing it like eight years now and and they're you know in like our age or older and yeah they're they're very their minds are sharp and it's it's great it's stimulating and getting opinions on current events um so I feel like I'm still teaching in a you know in a <laughs> funny way I'm, I'm oh, it's, it's definitely teaching. It, it, it's really important. Yeah, well, thank you, Joe. Yeah. So, no, so because I really like, oh, and, and I got close to a lot of the residents, some were in their 90s, some, some even 101, you know, and but like I said, their minds were great. Um, and, and it was very rewarding because I could see how they really liked exchanging ideas and, 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 and yeah, anyway, anyway, <clears throat> it's just, it's just, it's just great to see everyone here. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I got so emotional. I, oh, it, it's, I think that's sharing. I mean, that to, con, to share that depth of feeling is, is an honor and a gift to us, so thank you. Especially yeah, as a man, I, it's good to model that as a man. I, I strongly agree. Yeah. Um, anything so else? Danny, with, with your fear of the cancel culture, thinking about some of Randy Newman's songs. Oh, yes. They probably couldn't even be played today, you know, like short oh, and that's and a, that's a perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's a perfect example, really, Bill. 
Yeah, Randy Newman's song. In fact, I really, I, I finally, I broke down and I bought, I won't say her name, A-L-E-X-A, because she'll start. But if you see this little black thing, right. I say, and then I just say, play. <laughs> no, really, I play, I say, play Sail Away, Sail Away by Randy Newman. So it's funny you, yeah, I've been listening to him. Yes, yeah. Great, I, we'll, we'll do this again next month, let other people know about it. And um, uh, I love these, these sharing. Thanks to everybody who hopped on. No, thank you for organizing it, Gail. Well, thank you so much, Gail, yeah. You know, uh, Joni did all the collecting and Dave carried it, organized it. So I, I have the benefit of all their work. So it's it's nothing. Uh, b before you sign up, Joan, when's the last time you were in Los Angeles? Uh, I have not been here in three years. Um, and and, and uh, it's changed a lot in the time that I haven't been here. And, and uh, all my old favorite haunts are gone, mostly. And, that was uh, gonna be my question, if you notice much of a change. Uh, yeah, it, it seems. I mean, I, we were in Westwood Village uh, last night and um, uh, uh, we actually ate at a restaurant. It was a mediocre Middle Eastern restaurant, but uh, I, I only discovered belatedly that it was um, the very first, the site of the very first restaurant I ever ate at, which was Ted Owens Tips on Broxton Avenue. And I was very pleased uh, to look on Broxton Avenue to see that the Village Movie Theater and the Bruin Theater are still there. I thought they were gonna be demolished. Oh, oh, good. <laughs> yeah, good, good. So, right, so, so you'll send out another email of, about the next meeting. This is, I'm oh, assuming great. this is a good time for us, but we don't know about other people. Yeah. Works well. Okay. I'll see you Okay. Then. Thank you. Nice thank to you see all. you.